there are many things that we can talk about as it pertains to leadership. But in this specific segment, I want to talk to you about the law of excellence. So stick around. The word excellence uh, speaks for itself. You can do something good, you can do something okay, or you can do something in an excellent way. And that's what I want to focus today uh, in this specific uh, episode is to talk about what I like to call the law of excellence. And uh, particularly when we look through the word of God, we cannot say that, you know, Jesus himself did something halfway through. Jesus did not go on the cross halfway. Jesus, you know, did not heal people halfway through or just kind of started something left it behind. Yeah, no, he actually, everything that he did, he did it out of the pureness of his heart, out of the genuineness of his heart. Uh, he gave it 100%. And obviously, if I can uh, define the law of excellence in the best way, it was actually visible while he was hanging upon the cross uh, because he gave up his life. So you and I can have a new life, so we can have an eternal life. And he gave it all in through his short-lived life and through his short ministry of three and a half years, everything he did was with actual excellence. And also I'm reminded about this, another individual from the Bible, by the name of Joseph. I'll probably say he's one of my most favorite biblical characters from the Bible uh, because I do I see, you know, a lot of times uh, a certain reflection or resemblance in my personal life as it pertains to him. And just a little quick background that when you look at the life of Joseph, this young kid who had dreams, you know, that he's one day going to be a great individual. Obviously, his brother's like, okay, we got to get rid of him. This dreamer, this babbler, he's just getting annoyed unto us. And when he was sold into slavery and when he was actually serving in the courts of Potiphar, everything he did, he did it on a top-notch level, up to a certain level that even at one point uh, Potiphar said, you know, the only thing I know that I have is just, just the food that's in front of me. In other words, uh, even Potiphar was not concerned about his livelihood, about his well-being, about his wealth, because he knew he had the servant by the name of Joseph. He took care of all of it. And obviously, um, we, Potiphar's wife, you know, had the hots for, for Joseph and tried to seduce him, which didn't work out. And eventually, that got uh, Joseph into trouble. Uh, uh, through which he tried to do, ended up in the prison. But even while Joseph was, was in prison, he, he still said, you know what, if I'm here and I'm going to just die here, I still see what's in my heart. And everything he did, he did it to a top-notch level of excellence that even the, the guard of the whole prison made him in charge. Can, can you imagine that? Uh, just like, hey, look, I, I see your character. I see your life. Okay, here you go. Just just take care of everything here. Take care of the prisoners. It's like, wow, a prisoner taking care of prisoners. That's that's. That's something that's totally unorthodox. And then eventually when he stood before Pharaoh and interpreted the dreams and became the right hand and for seven years collected the grain and the harvest and then for the next seven years of famine, he fed the Egypt and all the surrounding regions. So just uh, the life of uh, Joseph was exemplified in excellence. Uh, he just gave it all that he had, his life, his time, and etc. And that's why Joseph is one of those unique biblical characters that we read about that brought so much influence and so much glory to God. So how does excellence uh, uh, relate to us as God's children, relate to us as leaders, especially if you have a certain a responsibility within your local church or you have a ministry or, or just you have a business or whatever you're doing in your personal life, uh, whatever we do it, as the word of God says, we have to do like unto the Lord. So let me just read you some thoughts concerning excellence. For an example, as I already mentioned, that Joseph exemplified the highest level of excellence in everything he did. So excellence is a choice. It is a choice. You could either be average like everybody else, you know, just come in on time like everybody else, sometimes a minute or too late, you know, can't wait to, to punch out of the clock just to leave. Or while, you know, I see some trash laying around, well, that's not my responsibility. I don't get paid for that. Ah, whatever, you know. So every day of our life, God gives us a choice. Uh, and that could be for anything, choices that we make every day. And also, as much as we have the upper opportunity to make daily choices in our life, to live a life of excellence is also a choice. And I want to challenge you, my friend, to, to be a person of excellence. What else is excellence? Excellence demands excellence. This is kind of interesting because we understand that whenever, like I'm in a construction industry as a builder, that you will not be able to build any uh, infrastructure, any house or, or any high rise or whatever it may be without having a foundation. And obviously the bigger the uh, building you're building, the, the stronger and the deeper the foundation needs to be. So uh, for any structure to be solid, it's uh, 
foundation is concrete foundation. You can't use sand, you can't use glue or anything else like that. So if I was to say that why excellence demands excellence, the foundation to excellence is excellence. You cannot say, well, excellence is supported on good works, on good smiles, uh, on good behavior. No, excellence is actually supported by excellence. That means you have to give it your all, everything that you have. And that's where average people are differentiate from uh, those who operate in excellence. Excellence has a price, high price tag. Average people will make an average salary, will live an average life. A people of excellence like Joseph, Jesus, and etc., they will live an exceptional life. And I think this is where sometimes us as God's children, we sometimes moan and groan and complain, well, why am I, my life sucks, everything's horrible. How come I'm not making that money? How come I have no influence? How come you know, I have no friends and et cetera? Well, we need to once again ask ourselves a question. Okay, well, what qualities do I possess? If, if I think that uh, you know, people are leaving me, I'm not able to have close people around me like friendships, as I mentioned before, well, analyze yourself, okay? Uh, how committed are you to a friendship? How committed are you to whatever you're doing, okay? Uh, you know, this is one reason why people even bounce around from church to church. Wow, I came to this church. Nobody said hi to me. Nobody, you know, expressed their love to me. Nobody paid attention to me. Okay, what about you as an individual? What are you doing? Are you going above and beyond? Okay, if that church you're currently part of right now or you were part of before, okay, how were you exceptional? Were you just like an average churchgoer like everybody else? Or were you going that extra mile? Were you the one that was first trying to uh, shake someone's hand or to say hi to them or try to make that connection? Or were you just sitting back? Well, you know, nobody's paying attention to me. So I'm not going to be attending this church anymore. I'm not going to be going to that small group or whatever it may be. That's why it's very important that when it comes to excellence, you need to be will willing to pay the price. And even in the business world, that is the same concept. Another thing is excellence gives you a high level of virtue uh, and actually makes you also a virtuous person. Uh, average people, you can see them everywhere. Average work, average behavior, average marriage, you name it. But to be above average, to be exceptional, to be an uh, individual of excellence, yeah, uh, it's going to give you a certain measure of virtue. And this is why it's important, well, honestly speaking, if I can put it this way, it's kind of sad that, you know, the body of Christ and even some local churches, they have a bad reputation uh, be because of just, you know, of who they are, how they live, what they have done, their lack of influence in the community and many other things or maybe certain issues that keep on continually popping up in that local church in amongst many Christians. And I think for us as God's children, for us as a body of Christ as a whole and also as a local church community, we need to stand out from the rest of the community. Uh, you as a Christian at your job, your workplace, you need to stand out from the rest of your employees. You as a student at a college or, or, or um, at a high, high school, because you're a child of God and you serve God, you need to stand out from the rest of your peers. Okay, in the business, your, your integrity, uh, your character, everything else, you need to stand out from the rest of your competition. But sadly enough, you know, you know that, that may not seem the case, that we, if anybody was to analyze us, uh, us as God's children or even as local churches, you know, sadly to say, um, they may not see a difference. Why? Because we're just average like everybody else, you know, just fake it till you make it and so on and so forth. So that's why I want to challenge you, my friend, that us as God's children, specifically uh, those who are kingdom leaders, or if you have a certain responsibility within your local church, you're a minister, you're a pastor, uh, that we need to live by this law of excellence and exemplify it to others so that we can become those role models. So here's a thought for you to ponder on. A person of excellence will never be average, as I already mentioned before. As a matter of fact, these individuals will stand out like a lighthouse in the midst of the storm. And this is a great challenge for us that we as God's children, the light of Christ is in us. And as we read in the, in, the, in the Gospels that a lamp, you know, you cannot hide it. You place it on top so it can be visible. And just like this lighthouse, that's what excellence does in our life. It uh, shines that light to others so they can look at us and say, hey, you know what, this person is different. The way they talk, the way they behave, their principles, their values, their work ethic and everything else. As a matter of fact, this person goes above and beyond. And let that be visible in your life and in my life. So here, here are a couple of humorous thoughts for you to uh, ponder on concerning the difference between average and, and uh, excellence. Here's one of them. Do you eat an average meal at a restaurant? I doubt it. If you're paying money for it, you don't want an average meal. Here's another thought. Do you enjoy watching an average movie? 
over an average TV show. And I'm sure after you started watching a certain movie and halfway through you're getting bored through, you're like, ah, man, you know, I don't want to waste my time. Or if you're at a movie theater, man, I already paid money for this. This movie's boring. Or even the TV show after a few series, you're like, ah, pfft. It didn't captivate my attention. I'm no longer going to continue to finish episode one or, or the season one or how it may be. Here's another uh, humorous question for you or a thought. Do you desire to have average friends? I highly doubt it. If you don't want to have average friends, don't be average yourself. Go above and beyond in your friendships uh, and go out of your way to actually serve your friends very well. Here's another thought. Do you want to have an average career? Or how about do you want to have an average salary? I highly doubt it. Or how about this one? Do you want to have an average marriage or an average relationship? Absolutely not. So as much as these uh, statements might be a bit humorous, I think it's a great challenge for all of us uh, as God's children that especially when we look through the Gospels, when we look through different prophets, men and women of God, and especially Jesus Christ, we see that they went above and beyond. At first, somebody like Saul, who became Apostle Paul, uh, out of his own zeal for God, how he understood it. He was persecuting the Christians. Like, oh, this new teaching through Jesus, this, this heresy, I'm not going to allow it happen until Christ encountered him on the road of Damascus. And he had a 180 degree turn. He's like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then because of everything that Paul did, went through shipwrecks, was beaten, was stoned, was continually on um, persecution, was imprisoned. He still did not allow all that opposition against him or his circumstances to stop uh, doing what he felt he needed to do, to preach the gospel, to, to write uh, most of the letters in the New Testament and actually to exemplify the law of excellence in everything that he did. And here's uh, you know, a couple uh, challenging thoughts for you. Uh, if you know for your particular church whether you're just a church member a leader there or a pastor do you want your church your local church to be average look around your community uh, whether you have one or a couple churches in your community or you have a church uh, almost around every corner do you want to be an average church without having any influence in your community without standing out and it's not to bash any other churches but that's a challenge for you and because for me personally, you know, I even challenged uh, our own leaders at our church uh, with the same question, do we want to be an average church in our community? And they respond, no, we don't. I said, okay. So I said, let's be willing to roll up our sleeves, get to work, and actually bring a kingdom impact into our local community. And as we wrap this up, I want to read you uh, this one more stand verb thought uh, to, uh, so you can uh, grab a hold of it. True disciples always seek opportunities to serve. Whereas religious people seek opportunities to be served. So that's a challenge for you. Are you as a child of God, as a kingdom leader, are you looking for opportunities to serve others? Or are you positioning yourself to be served? And Jesus said it powerfully himself. Hey, I did not come into this world to be served. Uh, but actually, I came to serve and to lay down my life as a, sac or a sacrifice for all. So as I wrap this up, my friend, hopefully this was a blessing, a challenge to you to understand the law of excellence. That let us not just... Uh, halfway do things, but let us wholeheartedly do whatever we do for God's kingdom. Let us not be an average child of God. Let us not be an average Christian. Let us just not be an average leader or a church girl, but let us be that individual that God has called us. And whatever gift and potential, potential that you and I have, let us fulfill it to the highest capability, to the highest capacity by living with excellence and doing everything with excellence that if somebody comes after us, Whatever we have done, they would not be able to improve on it. In other words, that's how above and beyond we go in our personal life, in marriage, in our families, in our businesses, if you have a business, at a local church, at work, in our community, wherever it may be, let us exemplify excellence to its highest uh, level. So at the end of the all, our Heavenly Father will get the glory. So hopefully this was a blessing to you. My friend, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. Uh, I would like to hear your comments and stick around. There's going to be a lot more content coming around. And until next time.